but yeah, they were saying I was culturally appropriating. I'm like, what the f are you talking about? You did kind of apologize. And uh, uh, do you regret that at all? Hell yeah. All right, so uh, glad, glad to have our, our guest. Well, this is the whole show. This is the show. This, this, this is this, it. This is the this show. Is what you came for. I hope you were pleased because uh, usually you're not. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we had gone back and forth on Twitter a while back, on Twitter a while back, in Twitter, I don't know, in the Twitter sphere. And uh, she's caught some flack. She's taken some hits. She's been politically incorrect. I think we agree on some things. I think we disagree on some other issues. You can follow her on the Twitter at Nicole Arbor. And of course, you know her from, I hate to say, of YouTube fame, but uh, you can check out her YouTube channel. Nicole Arbor, how are you? I'm amazing. How are you? I'm so glad we finally did this. I, no, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're not in Harvey Weinstein's dungeon there, are you? That looks, the, the brick is sinister. I might be in prison. I was waiting for you to say something immediately, but you're also in front of brick, so f*** you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, but this is, but see, this is texturized brick. That just looks this like is texturized down a hammock stuff. with a hole in it. This is texturized. It is, okay, right. I swear. I'll send you a sample later. It, it looks like the uh, the dungeon level in Super Mario when you actually have to kill King Koopa at that point. You know, it's, it's that gray and you I'm a big fan, yeah. Well, there you go. Well, there you listen, I'm glad to have you on. Um, We'd written about you quite a bit a while back. You, uh, I want to roll a clip here for people, for, for some of the audience who may not be familiar, although I think most people are. Great. You got a lot of flack for this video, rose sort of to internet notoriety, and then the view notoriety. I loved that segment. Uh, from, <laughs> from Dear did Fat you, People. Did you? That's let's, one of us. <laughs> let's watch the clip real quick. Fat shaming is not a thing. Fat people made that up. That's the race card with no race. Yeah, but I couldn't fit into a store. That's discrimination. Uh, no. That means you're too fat and you should stop eating. Are you gonna tell the doctor that they're being mean and fat shaming you when they say you have f***ing heart disease? I'm talking about the 35% of North Americans who are obese. Body positive. If you want to be positive to your body, work out and eat well. That's being positive to your body. And I can hear it right in there. I think a lot of people know Canadian, obviously. Now, where, where are you from in Canada, Nicole? Born in Hamilton, raised in Toronto. Oh, okay, Hamilton. I had some friends yeah. from, uh, from Ajax out there in Toronto. I don't know if that's still. Uh, I don't know if that's. Oh, still I'm around. sorry. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's still around. I was. I was born in Detroit, so I'm sorrier. Um, so this was the first time you got a lot of backlash, and I will. You know, I have to give you all the credit in the world for not backing down. You continued to make controversial videos. Um, mm -hmm. What was that like? That blast of cold water initially? Did you expect it doing the the anti fat shaming video? Yeah, I totally did. Like, okay. as well, I like I knew like people don't like the truth generically right now. That's kind of the truth has become something we're allergic to, which is such bullshit. Right. And uh, yeah, that was like my fourth viral video. And I, I posted a photo of Babe Ruth pointing to the outfield the day before I put Dear Fat People up just so no one could act like it was an accident. Right. And uh, yeah, I, I knew that the That's UK was foreshadowing like online, by the way, because if you didn't get controversy, it wouldn't have meant anything and no one would ever just know. Hold yourself. It's exactly. Like, it's like selfie <laughs> predictions yeah. on a sports game and just not releasing it if you're wrong. Um, yeah. Okay, so you knew so that. Did, did you expect it to I the magnitude it. that you'd gotten? I don't think anybody can expect magnitude because it literally went around the world and it was the number one trend on Facebook. It, like, you can't expect that. I knew it would go really big and I poked specifically at some YouTubers that are total social justice warriors. So I'm like, I'm going to let these assholes share my sh Yeah, there you go. They're like, Tyler Oakley's like, take it down. I'm like, no. Eh. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, I guess he has the last laugh because he's on the uh, the YouTube trending list with tranny makeup tutorials every other day. So we got that to look forward to. This is so proud of him. Yeah. <laughs> Good uh, for him. That's one thing. I remember, have you been checking out the YouTube trending list recently? Have you seen oh. what how awful it is? The amalgamation of Disney and makeup tutorials and social justice. And you just want to blow your brains out. Yes, I definitely do. But instead, I, I will try and do more comedy and lean away from anything that has to do with YouTubeism. It's going away, by the way. The trending list—they're they're removing it from Facebook. Uh, this is news. No, no, I'm talking about I'm talking about oh, yeah, uh, yeah. YouTube. YouTube, yeah, YouTube is yeah. You, what, what's funny is remember, remember all the social justice warriors, and I was like, what is this? Is my this is the YouTube trending list? And there were remember there was like four transgender makeup tutorials in a row and, halls, and they were going, yeah. doofus, that's based on your search history. I'm like, no, 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 this isn't suggested no, no. videos. This is trending <laughs> list. Yeah, and Be you only need one of those makeup stupid. tutorials. Be honest. Yes, be honest. You're exactly. I'm looking up was it? Jeffree Star, how to get a nice smoky eye. So, mm -hmm. um, Sparkles are in. I, I know, where would you consider, I don't want to ever misrepresent, uh, misrepresent your views in your own words. How would you say you line up socially, politically? Would you say left, center left, right? What? It's changed. You're going to get me in trouble. Like I get everyone uh, in trouble. That's what happens. Dope. Yeah, I'm Canadian, as you know. But being in the US more and more, I was like, liberal, obviously. Hello, I'm not a psychopath. Right. And then right. over the last like year and a half, I'm like, how? I still have not been like, I'm on this team. But like, 
how can I support people who are constantly lying and full of shit and crying about nothing? Okay. This is what I'm having a hard time with. What, what, so could you I'm identifying examples? more. Um, just like, like, yeah. like even like mainstream media, like even, even stuff like, you know, fat shaming. I've heard you go in on it too. Yes. I've heard people be like, Nicole, you know, if you're going back to stand up, which I am, you know, are you going to talk about being slutty and like all the stuff female comics talk about? I'm like, how about no? Cause I'm not. And like, yeah. this is not my shit. And just, it doesn't, I just, doesn't hurt. I've seen Amy Schumer's. It doesn't hurt to just pepper in a, a vagina smelling like a barnyard animal joke every now and then. It seems <laughs> that's a genre that does pretty well on Netflix. <laughs> I'm very proud of her for that. Yeah. I'm very proud. Unfortunately, my vagina's never smelt like a barnyard animal. I, I'm at that deficit. Yes. So I'll have to find other things to joke about. You are starting off at a handicap. So that's <laughs> one on the board Definite. for Amy Schumer. Um, well, this yeah. is interesting to me because I, obviously I, I was born in Detroit, but raised in Montreal from three to 18 years old. And there was an evolution for me. And I know you and I got into it a while back on Twitter and we invited you on the show and you, you were, uh, I would say, a little cautious back then. It was specifically, I think, on the topic of guns, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Wasn't that it? You know what? Straight up. I thought that, or I had some assistance going through my Twitter because there was a lot of people and they thought that you were like a drama YouTuber. They thought that you were like, I, I don't remember what show, but they saw your photo, thought mm. you looked similar to some drama dude and were basically like, F you. Yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, I love this guy. And I saw you on Rogan. I'm like, oh, this dude's funny as fuck. And he tells the truth. And then I, I saw I those I got the warm fuzzies. I got the warm fuzzies of being told off by an assistant, but <laughs> I'm glad that we're, we're here now. Okay, so <laughs> originally it was, it was because of guns. I know you specifically released a recent yeah. video that you've, you've changed your view on firearms a little 100%. bit. hundred percent. Okay, a hundred percent. Okay, but yeah. when I watched the video, it seemed like maybe maybe about 30, 40%. So why? What was the flash of genius moment, as I sort of describe it, that made you go, oh, I was wrong about that? Do you remember when it happened? How about everybody stops fighting? You know, and it was the school shootings and the way that it's the same thoughts and prayers. And now let's have something else to fight about, which is what I see it as right now. It's not even about guns. It's let's have something else to fight about because right. we fight about everything. And I was just like, you know, these people are never, ever going to give up their guns ever. It's not going to happen. So why don't we just, you know, alter some laws, try and make everybody safer. It's stupid to have armed guards at schools. Let's actually go back and get kids off drugs. Let's like, you know, get back to the roots of the issues. And I'm not against guns. People have them. So more people should have them. Yep. And uh, yeah, I have armed security guards at my events. I'm not going to stop doing that. So I'd be full of if I was like, you can't have guns, what, but I do. It would beg the question, just not to disagree for the sake of disagreeing, but if you have armed security at your events, why, why do you think it would be stupid at schools? Um, I just think it's getting, it's getting dumb at schools because it's not just random shooters. It's people who are at those schools. They're being bullied. They're, you know, when I look at the stats, a lot of them are on different kinds of uh, psychotropic drugs. So I think that's actually what we need to be addressing and go down to the root of it, not just people have guns and are shooting people because that's not what's happening. Right. But wouldn't having yeah. armed security, though, help? I mean, because they're, they're gun-free zones, right? That's the one, the one statistic that's consistent. Like, some of them are in psychotropic drugs, some of them aren't. Most of them are fatherless. Most of them yeah. have been dumped. But one that's undeniable is 98% of these shootings occur in, in gun-free zones. So I don't, yeah. I'm just asking why, why you sort of dismiss like I it would be stupid. I, think it, I do think it's stupid. You can't guard every door at once. You can't have like one vet sitting there who's probably going to be on his cell phone playing Candy Crush. And then, oh, I hear a thing. You know, like yeah. students are loud and obnoxious anyway. I just think it's just not going to be effective anyway. So I, I just think it's dumb. So what would you, um, you said kind of some, com because I think something you said uh, right off the bat is, was insightful about truth. People have an aversion to truth. And so yeah. I've talked about this quite a bit on this show. And this is where maybe sometimes I, I get a negative reputation. Uh, I try to be civil, respectful with anyone who comes on the show. But I say above civility, above mm -hmm. this common ground, I value honesty. Truth is more important. Truth, you have to be seeking truth. Otherwise, there, there can be no common ground. It's based on a lie. So uh, in, this, in this category, guns, you're Canadian, I'm Canadian. I moved to the States. Big supporter of the Second Amendment now. I was from Montreal. Montreal, where I think is even more strict, uh, maybe not Ontario, but con mm. c compared to Western Canada, Quebec has yeah. crazy gun laws. Um, what, what kind of common sense gun laws, I guess, do you think would be a good idea now uh, in, in the wake of these? Like, since if you don't want to fight with people, what do you think people would agree on? Um, I think that we can all agree if you are on certain drugs that have been proven to cause hallucinations and different side effects, then maybe during that time that you're on those pills, you don't have a gun. I think that that's pretty standard and people who have guns and are on those drugs might even agree. I think that, uh, you know, background checks are obviously happening. That goes without saying. But maybe if you have violent tendencies, if you've been in a domestic, then you've got to take your gun away for this amount of time. Right. If, you know, if let's say you're caught 
caught drinking and driving. Okay, well, we're taking away your gun for this amount of time until you can be an adult again. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't have all the answers, but I think there's got to be some workarounds and it's just not working the way yeah. that it is. I think, so, well, I, think you, I think you named everything that basically already exists as a law, except for, I mean, that's, that's the, right, that's the, the territory. Where's the truth there as far as, well, have you taken a Xanax and you can't own a gun? What about a woman who's taken a Xanax because she's actually really anxious about her psycho ex-boyfriend who wants to kill her and she can't get a gun in New Jersey? You know what I mean? That's There's really unfortunate for her. Yeah, yeah, and it's happened. It's happened. There was a lady killed yeah. by her psycho stalker in New Jersey because of a 30-day waiting period. Uh, and I'm sure she probably had some kinds of medication to, to, to deal with this. So I think we'd agree on a, on a lot of those fronts. Um, one thing I think we definitely agree on is, and I don't understand this. Now, did you did you start off with comedy? How did you start in the industry? Because I know now you're saying going back to stand up. What was it? I would like us to agree that your hair looks fabulous today because uh -huh. I'm so distracted by it. Oh, sorry. You know, it's <laughs> like, the headphones pushed it forward, and I got the Clark Kent. And by the way. I love it. I've had like 20 black guys. If I wear a blue shirt, Clark Kent. So we'll get to that in a second because that's a racial <laughs> story. Big white guy with blue and the curl. And they're like, hey, Clark Kent. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Take it. Um, but uh, what was I asking before that? Not get here. How did I start? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah the trajectory. Yeah, yeah. The trajectory. Yeah, yeah. I started in stand up like years okay. ago. I did the whole yuck yuck circuit. I did all that stuff in Canada. Oh, and yuck, then I was yuck. on video on trial. Yuck yucks. I remember yuck yucks, yeah. Forty dollars for a weekend, kid. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. How about no? Um, okay, or you can suck my dick. I'm gonna say no to both. Yeah. Um, yeah, unless unless you want unless you wanna work at Fox News or for the Weinstein company, but continue. Right. Um, basically did the yuck yucks thing, then I was on much music for years on video on trial and hosted a ton of big tours across Canada and all that kind of stuff. But then I was doing movies and all these things. I was in a bad car accident, two thousand eight couldn't do any of the stand-ups or any of the stuff, so I started shooting myself like this. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, getting lumped in with YouTubers hurts my soul, and uh, I've been offered a stand-up tour around the world, so I'm, like, back in the clubs almost every night now. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's... With that's real humans who are funny. Well, I understand where you're coming... Here's the thing. I understand where you're coming from with that. I don't have time doing the, the, the daily, you know, the nightly show here to do stand-up a ton, but I, when I started out, I said, wow, here's a medium, YouTube, right? Here, here's a medium that allows me to do all of the things that I couldn't really do on stage, where if you're doing an act out and an impression, you're going, this is kind of tough to fit into stand-up, so this gives mm -hmm. me a little bit more liberty, and uh, I thought, and, and, and this is completely unfiltered, whereas some Sometimes you'd have club bookers who you disagree with. Sometimes you'd have other comedians who would be pretty You honest. disagreeing with somebody? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then YouTube became but worse than anywhere else. Well, I wouldn't say worse, but it's slowly becoming worse than anywhere else on the planet. Social media now, because old yeah. media, they, they, they can't release their death grip. They're trying to get into the, that, these algorithms, and now people are trying to flock back to the clubs. Only now mm -hmm. you can get sued if someone has an iPhone in a club. Does that concern you? You know, they're pretty strict. They're pretty darn strict, and I actually feel safer. Like my safe space is uh, mm -hmm. in the clubs. Like I feel like I can say whatever I want there. But the fun part is like there's this weird energy with like the old stand-up comics who are like internet comedians aren't real comedians, and right. I'm like, okay, dude, I feel you. But also, you do an open mic and try out your material to 30 people. I try out mine to 17 million. So right. suck my, d you know, like. There's a, I don't know there's about that. I don't know about that last I part. I don't know if we had the LGBTQAAIP silent F here. Uh, <laughs> I was confused because you're very convincing. If that's the case. Thank you. I don't have one, but I keep one in my purse. Okay. So. Very nice. Yeah. Well, so like you can sell that. That's yeah. because you're from Canada, where you can't purchase a gun. So that's about the best shot. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It, it's actually quite effective. Yeah. I can, <laughs> yeah. The guy's trying to shoot me. I'm like, ah. He's yeah. like, what the? F it's like yeah. A, it's like an exaggerated yeah. waggy finger. Exactly. Yeah. Well, felons <laughs> tend to be incredibly homophobic, so it's very, it's a True. remarkably effective weapon. Um. Well, that's so. So, so now you're going back to, to to clubs, and you've talked about sort of your transition yeah. on firearms. I watched a video that you had done about how you love Trump. And I know a lot of it was tongue in cheek. <laughs> yeah. um, so it's hard to know, obviously, with a comedian, what's tongue in cheek versus what's real. Yeah. What's the overall transition here? Where would you say you are now today? Because it seems very different from a couple years ago. And, and one thing I've it talked is. a lot about on this show, regardless of whether you think I'm funny or I think you're, or I like every joke you do, the left today, the social justice <laughs> left is absolutely, this is the wing of politics trying to silence and ruin comedy. They're the ones trying to create a lexicon of what you can and can't say. And that's something yes. that's changed. That is what, that's what scares me about them. Like, and I would go to a lot of political events. Uh, years ago in Canada, I was actually junior prime minister of Canada. It was a thing. A that thing. was my first, it was my first real job. When I was 18, yeah, laugh at my face. It's cool. Junior prime local. minister of Canada? It was a thing. Wow. Still is, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I kind of just pictured Justin Trudeau as junior prime minister. 
And then he pictures Canada as Junior America. So you're that was what, that was when he was just one spirit. Now he's yeah. two. It's like the butterfly you know, effect of juniors. The, t- the tariff thing that he's doing though right now is gangster AF. I just think he's targeting <laughs> camping. <laughs> It's like camping. mayonnaise, aluminum boats, and you're like, what is what what happened at Boy Scouts? Bags. <laughs> yeah, no, I can't stand Justin Trudeau. I really can't. We could talk about that afterwards, but uh, okay, I, I, good. but go sorry, go ahead and continue Back with what Trump. you're talking about. Back to the trumping, the trumping. Um, yeah, I would make fun of him in like a tongue-in-cheek way, but also most of it was true. And I did think that he was going to win. I called it almost a year before he won on one of my videos, and I knew he was going to win because. There's that group of liberals who are just trying to shut everybody up. And to me, the only people trying to shut people up are the ones who have no real arguments and kind of suck at life. Yeah. Like, if you can't actually come to the table and either be funny or debate me, then you suck. You know, so. Do you find that you've, you've gotten more people attacking you from the left than the right, even though you've Definitely. gone? Really? Yes. Okay. And I didn't have that at first. And now I've noticed, like, that's who comes after me is you're not allowed to say anything about anything. Right. I'm like, but, but I did. So, right. And you've done some things that have made, I mean, you've, you've done some things that have made fun of sort of either Christians, or religious people. I know you're, you're pro-choice, pro-abortion. You did a video on that, which I would imagine would, of course, uh, upset or certainly have conservatives disagreeing with you. But you don't get the same kind of animosity from them when you do those? No, I don't. Uh, which is interesting, too. I don't really make fun of Christians. Like, I grew up, like, private Catholic school my whole life and in Christian churches. And I still go to church every Sunday or watch sermons, at least. Okay. But so that, to me, is poking fun at myself. Okay. But, uh... Yeah, the religious videos I've done, nobody really got mad at those ones. But uh, they get angry when I say things like, you know, if you're fat, it's your fault. That's yeah. offensive. Usually and, that is the case, yeah. You have a, you have yeah. a one in a million person where it's glandular. Uh, but even that person you find out is also eating an obscene amount. Okay, so but like a, a very specific example, I think, I, I, it's not tongue-in-cheek, I think you're, uh, you call yourself pro-choice, right? Yeah, okay. I do. But so you yep. released that video, and obviously, myself included, most people on the right would disagree with that. What kind of response did you get from the right in comparison to the left with like, dear fat people, shouldn't be yep. as much of a touchy issue as abortion. You would think abortion is the issue, so how did the right what react? It was. The, you <laughs> okay. know, the, the right was like, well, I disagree, this is why. You know, some people throw in their colorful words because they're colorful people from colorful places. Sure. But they didn't attack the way that I was attacked when they said, you can't, they didn't view me is what I'm saying. Right. The, the five bitty hens didn't sit around yelling at me about a topic that they didn't preface me about. Right. Like they just, people didn't lose their minds on the abortion thing. And I, you know, here's the thing. My mind can generally be changed on anything. If you give me reasonable facts, arguments or whatever, okay. I'm happy to change my mind and learn all the time. So maybe I'll change my mind on abortion. I just have encountered some women who really needed that. So I was like, okay. And I don't really know when the spirit goes into the body based on Christianity and religion. Yeah. So that was my take on it. Sure. But uh, I didn't really get attacked from the right. The right doesn't really attack the same way. I just, I think they're more I think the, I think the alt right kind of does like we did, you know, obviously because when they thought I was Jewish and then when they realized I wasn't Jewish, oh, they became more incensed. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> and then they just they paint Photoshop swastikas and stuff on me too because like, well, we can damage him more than claiming he's a filthy Jew by claiming that he hates filthy Jews. Hail Photoshop. Yeah, hail Photoshop. Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, actually that happened and we did a show at SMU. We've talked and there's a professor at UT Arlington oh, down the road, gosh. Charles Hermes, who posted all these fake quotes of me like so absurd like kill all the N-words and gas all the Jews, you know, and me with an iron cross like this these were fake photoshops and he Wait, posted them a professor what, believing what them is this gentleman on uh you know he's on the left and he didn't even go to okay. smu he went to ut arlington charles hermes and he posted these fake photos trying to get me banned went to the local press and um i called the school and said listen i, I don't want the guy to be uh, necessarily fired but this your professor is going out and doing this and he's pressuring his students and th this is a lie like he can go after me for things that i've said but these are clearly fake photoshops and quotes He's still on hire there at UT Arlington. The school has done nothing. What? Yeah. See, that, that stuff happens to me, and that's what I think we probably have in some of the commons, is people just make up shit about me. And then the media spreads it. Like, they said I was fired from a... Nicole Arbor, fired from a movie for Dear Fat People. Uh, no, I wasn't. What are you, what the f are you talking about? I didn't, re I I didn't read that. You were, they said you were fired? Fired from a movie, and then every news outlet covered this story. And then I, I was like, but I wasn't. And then I found the producer that made that story up when I was in a coffee shop 
turned on my camera and called them a liar to their face and posted that on the internet. Still no retraction. I can see Nakia Jared. I know exactly what you're about to join in when she said, but it wasn't. You were about to go to the I, Tanya line. Oh, uh, was. Did you ever see the I, Tanya? I, Tanya is so good. Did you remember the guys talking about being like, but you weren't in the FBI? But it was. <laughs> but you weren't, though. But I was. And anytime someone <laughs> says it's a, a, yeah. a tee up sure. for not gay Jared. Well, maybe we'll get back to changing your mind on abortion here a little later on. Um, or are you changing my mind? But um, Trudeau. Okay, here's a good example. When I was in Canada doing stand up, so I was doing it, uh, this would have been 17 or 18. Uh, the first person I think I, I would have been 18 at this point because the first person I ever voted for was Stephen Harper. And I know everyone back to all the comedians like, what? How could you? I'm going, well, hold on a second. Looking back, they avoided the housing bubble. He actually did a fantastic job, and he didn't make Canada the laughing stock like Trudeau. And also, if you look at it, Stephen Harper vehemently fought against the hate speech laws. And now you have a prime minister who actually supports. You have people like Mike Ward, put before human rights tribunals for jokes. You have mm -hmm. people like Jordan Peterson, who've said they won't Stop be- Stop it. Say oh, it again. Say his, name, say his name again. Say it again. Yeah, Jordan Peterson, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Oh, okay. Well, okay, so I'm sure that's okay. part of your transition, I'm sure. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, we won't send this video to him, as I like his wife. She's a nice lady. Um, I like his brain. It's okay. I'm not trying to... Okay, there you go. Yeah. That's the way he thinks. Yeah, exactly. I do. I do. His brain turns my brain on. Well, there you yeah. go. You can keep a brain in your purse right next to your sidearm. Um, so, but now you have Trudeau. Does it... And I remember every single... And I still have a lot of comedi leftist comedian friends in Montreal who actively support him. Go, hold on a second. Does it scare you that you're supporting a guy who wants laws to censor speech, including already exemplified with comedians. When are Canadian comedians gonna wake up to this? He's just too nice. So he's, he's too nice. He doesn't want to offend anybody ever, which is like the whole Justin Trudeauism, which is just like his dad, like we don't want to offend people. So he's just like, okay, I don't want to offend this group or this group or this group, but it's all too much. Like that one's ridiculous. I still do like the tariff thing though. I try and go like, thing by thing with politicians and political leaders because I'm like, okay, that's stupid and we're going to have to go back to that one. But this tariff thing is gangster as f what, what, what do so. you like about the tariff thing? I love that it feels like they're playing battleship. I love that it's like, oh, you're going to go after this? Right. Well, B3, I got your ketchup, bitch. And then- You sunk my sandy vagina. Oh, I'm sorry, exactly. Prime Minister. <laughs> Wow, yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, I, just, I love it. It was uh, so calculated and Canadian. What a Canadian way to attack. We're going to get your f Hershey's chocolate. It's so stupid and amazing. It, 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 the whole tariff thing is very is very silly overall, honestly. But yeah. uh, this isn't the first time it's happened. Actually, I think we go back to Jean Chrétien. He did all sorts of things to artificially sort of uh, keep the Canadian dollar down to encourage tourism. So this, this is something that actually, you know, NAFTA is in need of an overhaul. It has been for a long time. This just isn't the best way to come to the table. Let me. Uh, speaking of which, I want to talk about your more recent, obviously, uh, kerfuffle here, your hootenanny, where oh. um, <laughs> the, the dust up, Childish Gambino did the, uh, what was the name of the? This is America. This is America. And then you did, um, I guess, a, sort of a take on it, a, more of a, not a feminist take, but a woman's take, Don't and you got a lot of fun. I, okay, I won't call it yeah, yeah. Let's roll a quick clip and then talk about the backlash. Pretty, that's the girl. We just want his money. Get him and behold. This is America. Don't catch you climbing up. Don't catch you climbing up, cause they'll get you slipping up. Hey, come on! Okay, so first off, I don't think I've ever seen a guest enjoy their content as much as Nicola. <laughs> Excuse me, she's getting into I like uh, appreciate the production value. I know a lot of work went into that. So first off, This Is America was basically this sort of Black Lives Matter, almost like an anthem, the idea of yeah. black in America. And yours yeah. dealt with sort of female issues in America. Uh, I guess, would that be an accurate depiction of your take on it? Yeah. Okay. And then you're accused of being a racist. Uh, explain. Yes. Isn't that funny? And yeah, I can't explain that part. <laughs> um, it's because it's f dumb. Um, so yeah, I just literally I made that thing in 24 hours from concept to finish, and I just wanted awesome. to get in the habit of. Thank you, sir. I uh, I just wanted to get in the habit of like making stuff fast again and not thinking too much and just like. The same way that I think some of your sketches might be made. You're like, ah, I have an idea. Let's do it. And now uh, some of them are amazing. Bit, yeah. Some of them are whatever, but uh, yeah, just I just wanted to go, okay, here's what women face in North America. And uh, it was meant to be not mocking, but tongue in cheek, and this is my version. Right. And in the same way that like Childish Gambino is being a bit of a dick with some of his facial expressions, I was definitely being a bit of a dick in some of my stuff too. Right. But uh, it and the, the backlash that was from like, black people saying that you basically made a white version and it was tone deaf to black people. Which people's is life. weird because half of my cast and crew are black people, yeah. which brought us to black people telling me they aren't black enough, yeah. which was 
that was I've never experienced that before. Well, I think if you're so white, you you counterbalance it where you make up for any blackness they bring to the table. I white am Canadian the American race personified. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't be whiter. Um, yeah, I'm gonna see through. So now, one thing I, I will say, you sort of you didn't apologize, but you walked it back a little. Some uh, after you had this backlash, I think it was what's that morning show, the Black Radio Morning Show, Breakfast Club. Uh, I don't Breakfast know. Show, I don't yeah, listen yeah, yeah. to it. How, how did you handle it? What, what was your approach? Well, at first I was just laughing about it because it's so ridiculous. It's like, this had nothing to do, my version, with racism. You know, saying, I'm co-opting, you're you're stealing now. You, you've, oh, sorry, what's the word? My brain is a little slow. Cultural appropriation. Thank you, sir. That's you've fine. culturally appropriated it. And I'm like, okay, fine, fine. All white people, as of now, stop culturally appropriating anything of hip hop. Do not go to the concerts. Don't buy the clothing. Stop it now. Because yeah. it just seems silly to me. Uh, but yeah, they were saying I was culturally appropriating. I'm like, what the f are you talking about? Like, I just like it. Where, where's that line of, hey, I like this, so I did my own version. Right. But you stole it. You're just repeating. I'm like, you've never seen satire or parody or covers? I, I, what? Yeah, I think these would fall, because it's not really a parody, and it's not really satire. Yeah. It might fall more under a cover, um, which might be why they're upset. What was yeah. that? A remix? Yeah, yeah, I guess a remix. So maybe they were maybe they were upset about that remixing something that they think is more of a black anthem into a non-black anthem. And uh, you released a Which video. Which is funny. On. Producers like I had a, I had a fan walk up to me, a black fan actually, in the street and be like, "Don't you ever f***ing apologize for that thing again?" Because I kind of apologize because I never want to hurt someone like their culture if it yeah. like really means something. Uh, but they're like, don't you f***ing apologize. That song was co-written by a white dude from Sweden, and the music behind it was written by a white dude, and the video was created and directed by a Japanese guy. Yeah. It was a cultural mashup the whole time. And I'm pretty sure the head of the distribution had a last name, uh, Steen or Berg, somewhere in the, somewhere in the they lineage. They did, because they got all the money from my video. <laughs> this is true. And, they, and all the yeah. banks! Watch, the, yes. the, the alt-writers are going to be like, I knew it! <laughs> um, you did kind of apologize. And... Uh, do you regret that at all? Hell yeah. Okay. Hell okay. Yeah. So, you, so going Hell back, you wouldn't have apologized yeah. at all because you no. realize appeasing crocodiles is futile. Yes. Uh, but like, I had that moment though where I'm like, okay, wait. If this is like a real, someone explained this to me, and I sat down with like all of the black people I could find. I legit walked up to a <laughs> oh, straight that, up. That was the whitest way to say it. All the black people you can shake a stick at. See? <laughs> Don't shake the sticks. Shake the. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, there you go. <laughs> I have them. Uh, yeah, I literally walked up to like a table at a taco place of black people. I'm like, hey, there are black people. Can I have a chat? No lie. I literally did like multiple times. Can I have a word with you whippersnappers? <laughs> here's the here's the thing. See? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I talked to all these people about it. And I'm like, OK, I see why you're upset. But that's not actually what was here. Right. So the offense that was coming at me wasn't real. And then when it came down to you're not allowed to do anything because you're white, you're not even allowed to like this. This is our thing. This is I'm like, OK, you're just being petty as f yeah. this, this doesn't come down to an actual real. Well, I'm Nicole, glad you crossed a religious line. I'm glad so you, I was, you say I was, that because I was a little disappointed uh, when you apologized because I, well, I remember I was sitting there going like, Ooh. slap it, yeah. slap it, just do it. There you go. I don't Thank have you. a purse, I but I, I was I was watching going, oh, this isn't going to end well because it's not really about what she did. Uh, it, it's not going to end here because the apology is never going to be enough. And let me give you an example for it. I know that you released in your video and I watched it and you talked about having sort of discussions and economic slavery today. And I know you talked about yeah. sort of police brutality. To give you an idea, if you're not starting from truth, and I don't think that you knew this, you're actually more likely to be shot in the United States as a white man than a black person. So this is just factually inaccurate. And that's the thing. It's, now, if you say that, for example, I'll get in trouble this here. what I like about you. <laughs> well, well, things. we wrote about it, and here they were mad about the fact that we were presenting that information, regardless of whether it was accurate, saying, well, it doesn't matter if it's accurate, because there are, one life lost is one life too many, just like with the gun argument. Even if you present common ground, if they say, well, if it prevents one life from being lost, ban mm -hmm. all guns. Uh, that's what I saw unfolding after you kind of apologized, and, and I, I think now we, we probably both agree. I think we do agree, and I'm never going to apologize again. It's just like, unless it's something that is very specific that I was ignorant to something and now I've learned a fact and I'm like, oh, shit, I was wrong about right. a thing. Cool, I'll apologize. But when it's just something that I will never be okay, even if I do apologize, like, shit, you go away. Yeah. Like, I didn't do this to hurt anybody. That wasn't the point. You misinterpreted my work. That's fine. It's artwork. 
Childish no, I don't, I don't think they misin- I don't think they misinterpreted it. I think. See, here's the one thing okay. in your in your apology video, and this isn't me mansplaining. I know, I know, you wouldn't be uh, throwing that card at me anyway. I don't. How dare I don't think it was misinterpreted. I think it was ah, proactively and- manipulated for a news story. That happens all the time. Um, for example, oh. we were fact checked by Snopes, or was it Snopes, or was it uh, Politifact? I think it was Snopes. We put a story up. We talk about this all the time. We put a story up after Cologne, Germany, the mass rapings that happened with happened with the Muslim migrants. They passed out pamphlets how to not rape. They're actual cartoons telling the, the Muslim migrants there how to oh not rape. God. Yes. Oh and so we, we wrote this story. It went up online and Snopes it's gave like it. Primitive me too. Yes. <laughs> primitive. It's like, ha, no, it's more of a suggestion like hashtag her too. <laughs> um, so what happened is Snopes gave it a fact check, said it was wrong. And here's why. They said this is factually incorrect because this wasn't the first printing of this pamphlet. It wasn't printed for Cologne. They just happened to redistribute it, put it back in circulation. So, I just love the way your body moves when you're imitating that. Yeah, Snopes. <laughs> I, I picture them sitting there like this a little bit for oh, some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, but uh, that, that was how they fact checked it. And that wasn't a misinterpretation because we never said this is the first ever printing of the don't rate pamphlets. We said they're passing out don't rape pamphlets in Cologne, Germany, and that's their headline. I think that's what happened with you. I think we're seeing your transition here a little bit as you're, like you said, you're developing in your views, and uh, I think your eyes are going to be more open to the fact that I don't think people have misinterpreted what you've said. I don't think there have been misunderstandings. I think you're going to learn they're going to do it anyway, and they're going to deliberately turn it for a story. They don't, they already don't like you. I mean, that's, and I mean the far left. They're going to- What? Yeah, I know, I know. There's no way to appease them. So you just need to, uh, you know, figure out what your core values are, I think, at this point. Because you've been awake. This is sort of the awakening that happens, right, with a lot of people. They say, well, I see the censorship. I see the far left. Mm -hmm. I don't like what they're doing. But then I've heard of kind of like, well, I don't have all the interest on guns, right? I don't necessarily know entirely where I line up on abortion. I think now this is where Peterson is great. Uh, Shapiro, I, our show Maybe is again. hopefully helpful. You know, I, I don't want to do it. I'm uncomfortable here. Um, I'm uncomfortable to do this by Skype. I feel like Anthony Weiner. Um, now you need now to <laughs> determine what hills are worth dying on. That's what I think is kind of your step here because uh, they're, they're going to shoot you anyway. Unfortunately, to me, it's the, it's the hill of truth. And yeah. I always got to hit that. Thank you for saying that, by the way, about that it was that they wanted to spin a story. It's it's fun to think of it that way now. But yeah, I also, with that video, I was like, really? Like, I, I barely tried. This one? Yeah. This one's viral now? All right. Well, right. oh, oh, because I'm a racist. That's a weird one. Like, yeah. it's getting to the point where I'm just like, you guys are just dumb. You're just making shit up. Yeah. This is just silly. Well, and, then, uh, what about yeah. t- today? Well, what's your opinion on this? Listen, obviously you're a, you're a, you're a, you're a fetching young lady. If you were sitting and I would approach you, I'd say, you're a fetching lass. Um, and what, I, uh, I look like Clark Kent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's my f- look like Clark Kent. Go on. I'm sorry about that bullshit. Um, I, I, I get it all the time, especially when I used to wear glasses. Big white guy, hair like this, blue yeah. glasses, Clark Kent. It's okay. I'm like, I understand it. I get it a little bit. I wish I had they the Henry Cavill like salary. You mean you like it? I don't. Just I don't mind. <laughs> I don't. I don't mind go. it. Um, yeah. but uh, uh, what was it about? Says okay, yeah, Miss, Miss America. Bikinis yes. now are gone. Um, mm. even I don't understand that, but I cannot for the life of me understand. We talked about this yesterday. The evening gown that's gone. Yes. Why? What's, Why? Yeah. I don't know. I thought maybe yeah. you'd have a female perspective Jinx. that could help you're me. You're not allowed to talk until I say your name three times. Um, okay, fine. Crowder, crowder, crowder. So here's my thoughts on that. I have a hard time with pageants because I love being a pretty girl. I love it. It's like, you know, I go out of my way to try and be pretty because I'm a girl and I'm honest. Right. Like I put okay. the makeup. I, I do the hairs. I, I, I These aren't my eyelashes. I stick them on with glue. Yeah, I, know. I enjoy... Thank you. My, my um, wife knows all about it. She had an Iranian do it once on a Groupon, and she almost went blind. So we learned the hard way. Continue. <laughs> True story. Yeah, wow. She's, she's Terrifying. <laughs> We've all been there, though. Don't yeah. Groupon glue on. N- nothing that involves a glue gun near your retina. Avoid the Groupons. She, she's, no Groupon. She's, she's passed now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I did a Groupon for a, a waxing before, so that's a different story. Uh, um, probably similar. Uh, Continue. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, I like doing fun things. I was an NBA cheerleader. I've choreographed a bunch of the cheer teams. And it's really fun. It's fun to get that attention. It's fun to be hot and sexy and like, woo, and yeah. But at the same time, you're like, why am I only whipping my hair? I'm a trained dancer. Like, why right. am I doing the exact moves that a stripper does? Why are there old men rating my body out of 10? It's a weird dichotomy because it's fun, but also it's creepy. So I don't know. Maybe I don't know. What do you think? 
I've had calendars. I've been in calendars that sold very well. And I've also been like, ew, these creepy comments online make me feel gross in my nether regions. But I don't know. I mean, I, this, this is one thing we just talked about yesterday. I was, I was curious as to your opinion, because again, to me, the feminist left where they go out and they uh, bare their breasts for the slut walk and they find offense in an evening gown ceremony being judged by, let's be honest, mostly gay men. Uh, it doesn't True. Make a lot of, doesn't Aren't make a lot we of sense all judged by gay men, though, all the time? Yeah, well, that's <laughs> yeah. the one thing. Often when women have like, these unrealistic expectations of women, I say, no, here's the beauty. Men want to see you naked. Men also want to yeah. see you in an evening gown. But I don't like this gown. I revert you back to the to point A. They still they want to see you in less clothes. They want to see you in more clothes. We actually have to, as men, we have to perform. Like the W yeah. the WNBA, or if you look at women's sports, it's just all of a sudden like if she's attractive, she does well. <laughs> Tom Brady, you look at Tom Peyton Manning. He's not gonna, people aren't going to pay to see him in a bikini walkout. You couldn't. He has to well, be the best quarterback who's ever lived. I think you might find a few. I would. On that. That's a I that's would. a bad example. Peyton Manning. Yeah. Peyton Manning. You said Tom Brady. Oh, but then I said Peyton Manning. Oh. I realized I corrected myself because yeah, Tom yeah, Brady. Would it pay? The, the latter, not so much. The former, okay. What, but, $20. What, what, this is what it is. This is the very element of, uh, of that event. It was a bathing, uh, a, a bathing review. That's how it started. So it's fine. Yeah. I understand. If, 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 you're to, if you were to say in sports, for example, hey, show us your breasts, well, the woman is there to play a sport. But in this case, the woman is there to present herself in clothing or the swimsuit. We're I show ponies. And I think either you want to be a show pony or you don't. And if you don't want to play show pony, go away and let us play ponies. Like, that's just how I feel about it. I want my My Little Ponies. You can have your blocks. That's fine. Go build. I'm going to build this thing. I just think, again, it's back to the right to choose, Stephen. Right. It's uh, if I want to do this, I'll do this. And if it feels weird and you're getting creeped out, stop doing it. And then all of the crazy dykey lesbians who want to be offended by everything can go away because this is not their sport. Yes. This is, well, they were never going to win anyway. <laughs> using the term not, sport very loosely. But, but we removed their right to choose. That's the point. I, yeah, they, they can no longer choose to do a beauty pageant. It's like everything That's else. Dumb. Did, did, That's dumb. Do you know about the evening gown thing? They're saying, we're not going to do evening gowns. You can wear whatever you want. That's a, th that's a changing room at Marshall's. <laughs> that's stupid. I hate that. I love evening gowns. That's really fun. I'm like, this gown is worth more than their answers for world peace. Right. And I just find that part hilarious. So yeah. I, this, this is where we are. Gown. I, I don't Feed know. the children. <laughs> Do you, do you feel like, uh, well, can I ask your age or no? You're, you're, you're probably pretty close to my age. I'm younger than Beyonce, older than Selena Gomez. Okay, all right, there we go. Well, I hope so. I hope so. I, was it Selena? No, I was thinking, who's, who's the one who was yeah. spitting on the donuts who said, I hate America? That was Ariana Grande. Ariana Grande. I confuse them. Uh, you know, here's the thing. Ariana Grande, I've heard, like, some things from fr people who are friends with her that they were like, oh, we're very offended by Nicole Arbor's videos. And I'm like, you said you hate America. And I know that that's out of context. I know that's not a thing. Yeah. You know, I think that we all get like worried about nothing. I love Ariana Grande. Really? I don't. Yeah. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't go, I, I wouldn't eat anywhere where she has been uh, in a drunken stupor after, after seeing that video. Okay, so final point. We were you just talking about dirtier this. things in your mouth and you know it. I <laughs> have absolutely, but the thing is I didn't put it back. That's the issue. Yeah. <laughs> you are superior to her in every moral I way. absolutely am. And yeah. it's not because I'm a man, it's just because I'm a better person and highly judgmental. So, um, sure. like I said, I think now, once you've had this transition, you got to pick which hills to dine. I'll be curious to see where you are in a year because I know, like you said, your, your views on guns have changed. I appreciate mm -hmm. your candor in, in discussing sort of this apology with this backlash for this video. I think a good place to start, for example, we're not going to resolve this today, is you mentioned you're, you're mostly pro-choice. Some women have needed that. This kind of comes down to you have to determine where life begins. And uh, Jordan Peterson talks about this. So does Ben Shapiro. Scientifically, remove religion from the equation. That is the argument. And uh, yep. I think when you go there, it's, it's a pretty cons I argue it's a pretty consistent line at, uh, at conception. But you have to pick which hill you're going to die on there and be consistent with it. That's true. And I'm, I'm still movable on that one. And I, I watched the videos. And I, I love Ben, too. He makes me giggle. I, I like the way he talks. I'm, I'm a fan. He's <laughs> such a crazy little but he's telling the truth. <laughs> Well, maybe on our next Sunday show, I'll have Nicole Arbor on, uh, and I'll, I'll have her fat shame my producer. Um, that was really good. <laughs> but, but the one thing about Ben is, if you watch him, when he really get, he gets a point, his brain is operating faster than most people. It's like he's thought of something really smart and really dicky, and he's thinking about how to pull it back just enough so it's palatable. So, well, re re really, you're just you're factually incorrect, and you're like, oh, okay, you were going to call his mom a whore, but then you scaled it back a little bit in the internal <laughs> monologue. Um, I'm proud of that i like when he gets really excited his eyebrows start going before he even makes the point yeah i know watch for it next it's time like the it's, really... <laughs> it's like the park it's like the park ranger and yogi bear it's just okay, <laughs> uh okay we have to get going i appreciate you taking that where's the best place for people to find you uh i know obviously your twitter youtube and where can people see details on your tour 
Um, you can go to NicoleArbor.ca and I have my first book coming out. Ow, ow! It's uh, How to Lose the Excuses and f***ing Win Already. Okay. Ah, yeah. You're tapping into the Trump cool trend. Don't lie about that. You knew you were tapping into the Trump trend of winning with that. What? Winning? Um, I so was winning the Trump Senate. Yeah, well, I've been winning for years. You were winning. Team. You're in, in that dark age of winning after Charlie Sheen when no one used it, but then Trump brought it back. So I appreciate exactly. it. you stuck with it. <laughs> Full circle. And tiger blood. Uh, well, good. Well, listen, and I appreciate that you, you spell Arbor with an, uh, an O U R. Uh, I uh, I still spell color with a U, but even even in the states, and I get flack for it from not Gadget. Nicole Arbor, thank you so much for being here, and we'll we'll have you back anytime. You know, you feel maybe there's an evolution, or you want to discuss, or even work through some issues on air. We're we're we're, uh, we're open here. We're open to you. I can't wait to hear what your fans have to say about my abortion thing. <laughs> I, I think here's the thing. I think I get a lot of them to try and convince you and want to have you back on to discuss. I just didn't think we'd be able to cover That's it today. Fine. That's most likely. We've had Naomi Wolf on the show, uh, who you know is as bad as it gets as far as feminism. And most people are like, I think she's wrong about everything. That's about typically as bad. I think you are incorrect about everything, madam. And that's as bad as it gets for most people. So I love your fans if that's who they are. I appreciate them. We have a few furries Duh. in there. All right. Nicole Arbor, thank you very much. If you like the video, subscribe. Watch one of these other videos or hit the notification bell. Well, you should hit that if you subscribe anyways because subscriptions don't mean anything on YouTube anymore. Now you have to hit notifications so that it shows up in your inbox. So I don't know why you subscribe in the first place, but that's what you have to do. Also... We're not making money off these videos anymore because YouTube decided why. They, they just said we're not going to. And when we said why, they didn't tell us why exactly. Imagine if you showed up to your job, you did all your work, and then they said, hey, by the way, we're not going to pay you. You said why? They said, piss off!